Hey, this is Jesse Bourne. Uh, we're back again in the shop, just making a video about some of the stuff I'm working on right now. Basically, I've been working hard on the next puzzle, the Fibonacci. I'm also gonna be working on the CHS2 or Sundial box. I've got a lot of tools I'm setting up for the CNC, putting up fixtures. This is uh, epoxy inlay, so not quite as good as a wood banding inlay, but um, the pattern's interesting. I wanna change the pattern because it's just a little off. And then these miters I also cut right on the CNC. I cut them with this bit right here, which is a countersink bit. And I also got this three flute countersink and it's helical, so it, it's gonna shear the cut. I expect this one to cut even better than just the single flute. The only issue is uh, with the three flute, the geometry at the very tip of the tool is going to drag a little bit more. It's not gonna have the flutes running all the way to the tip. I'm thinking I might need to make a fixture that's held down with screws rather than a vacuum so that we can machine all the way through the fixture, in, in a sense, cut right down through the table so that we can cut cleanly and we're gonna swing by and we're gonna see what Everett's up to. Just finishing this up for another box. It's uh -huh. all set to go. Just need to yep. let that dry and we'll finish that up. We just got this. We, we're, mm -hmm. we keep trying out new stuff. So this is a, what do you call this? Like a solder mat or something? But yeah. The, the idea behind it was just to keep the boxes off of the wood surface here yeah. because sometimes like there's glue or chips or little pieces of metal or stuff that just falls on the workbench and we want to keep that off of the product. Right. And so far, how do you think it's working? Um, it's pretty good. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure quite yet. Mm -hmm. It is kind of nice. It is easier It is easier to clean off. Mm -hmm. Um, So sometimes when you're working down, after a while you have to like vacuum it down and that's kind of a pain because you got to move right. everything. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this, you can just kind of take it. You can just kind of... Mm -hmm. Smack it off. Um, I've also been taking this and then just, mm -hmm. you know, spraying Soap it down. Soap and water. Soap and water and then just clearing it off. So that's kind of nice. Um, yeah, just right now the big thing is having to move it from spot to spot. But oh. I, I do think maybe if we had a couple of these it wouldn't be bad. Yeah. I think eventually it'll come home because if you look at a sea chest, sometimes you'll see the little uh, specks of glue underneath or something and some of that is like inevitable because of the way it's glued up but some of it is just because it's set on a surface with yeah. some sort of glue or something on it so um we're doing some more deburring and mm -hmm. stuff yeah and it's kind of like the more time everett has to do boxes and we're finishing boxes faster you know either everett or i will find little things about the boxes that we could chamfer or deburr or yeah. just um, so we're basically changing the look of this whole section right here. Mm -hmm. So before this all used to just, we just left it all alone and it was all straight. There was no like, just, we didn't really do much with it, but we realized if we're going for that rugged look, this stuff really should look like it's been weathered. Mm -hmm. So now with, with these parts, uh, we deburr them and then we kind of buff them. And then I go around the edges of like the wugs and these pieces up here. And you know, just kind of round them off so that way it looks like they're they're older and they're mm -hmm. a little bit worn down. Right. And we did some experimenting too, like we we tried chamfering them just to see how that would look. But you and I both mm -hmm. kind of agreed that that looked a right. little too nice. Right. We don't. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah. We don't want to go crazy polished, nice like yeah. everything is like geometrically perfect, forty-five degree chamfers and everything around here. It yeah. just kind of looks, we want it to look like it's been worn in for a hundred years. But at the same time, we don't want it to look like it was just a hodgepodge box. Yeah. That was just kind of yeah. thrown together. We want it to look valuable, but also yeah. really old. Yeah. And we're putting more time into it too, which I, you know, I don't, mm. I don't mind putting more time into the look of it. I think right. that just, that helps it even yeah. more. So definitely not lacking in quality. <laughs> Yeah, so, no, the quality... Just because it looks old, dude, you know, we're, right. we're putting work into it, so... Yep. And I like finding those little things where we yeah. can just keep making it better. But, yep. Um, yeah. No, that's been fun. But we got this WorkSharp 3000, and this is just for the chisels we have here because I, basically I was the one sharpening them on stones, and it'd be like, yeah. you know, a week later or whatever, and 
Everett's or Joss is like, you know, these are getting super dull or whatever. Yeah. So I'd have to take them over and get all the glue off or whatever's on there, get the chips out. So back to the CNC. Um, one other problem we're having is that with all this light coming through the window, I need to like put some shades on because it actually warps the, the fixture table. It throws all the parts uh, out of whack because things start changing dimension. This will start cupping. Now in the plastic, it's very slight in the acrylic. It's not gonna matter too much. But over here in the MDF where I have some fixtures, you can see this is going to lift up off the table slightly. We don't want any kind of warping going on. That's not good for our part dimensions. So what I'm gonna have to do is just put on some shades to keep the light from coming through. I got this little jig back here and that's where I put the bottoms of the boxes and do the inlay cutting where I would do this is right on that fixture. So I got that one set up. I wanna set up another couple of acrylic fixtures right here for clamping the sides for doing the miters. I have a lot of fusion files with a whole bunch of different setups. Here's just one setup. I did a test cut the other day. I made these. They came out dimensionally perfect. It's just a matter of testing them with the other parts. And of course there's going to be Yosegi going on top of this. This is some of the other fixtures. I want to set up the CNC machine to run the pirate boxes in the evening like after dinner and then I can shut it off at like 9 or 10 o'clock because right now it's just running for three hours in the day it takes away the amperage we only have a hundred amps here in the box so if we could get that running later in the day we could use up the amps on the other stuff and we wouldn't have as much draw on on, on that and we wouldn't have to worry about flipping breakers which we do from time to time. Okay, so one other uh, tip for all the CNC enthusiasts out there. So in order to set the Z on this machine, we're using this little homing switch and this will register how high the spindle is up off the table, but it's, it's not super accurate just based on uh, the design of this wheel and this flag here, just hitting it. So. We're going to be off around seven to ten thousands, you know, max, and we can't have that with these parts. We're we're much more precise than that. So the way I set this dead on super accurate is I take a little block like this, and I'll just bolt it to the table. I I have these prepared with uh, holes through here, and I'll just bolt them right to the table every day when I start up the machine. I'll bring the spindle over. There's a program loaded on here that will uh, bring the spindle down to 0.85 and it will buzz off the top of this block and then it will move over here and it will stay at 0.85 then I'll take this off and I'll measure it right here with a micrometer and the micrometer will tell me that the machine actually cut it at say 0.847 so now I know that it's three thousandths undersized so then I'll just go over to the control here and I'll say that the Z is at 0.8 Four, seven and then it will update and then it will just remember that number and all your parts are going to be dialed in perfect every time and that's just been way way nicer all our parts have been super dialed for the last like 20 20 30 40 boxes somewhere around there 